Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, today's video is just a quick little thing answering a request from a viewer who, um, in a previous video, left a comment saying that uh, would I please take apart and deconstruct the following chord sequence. Um, this one, basically G to B major to C major to C minor. It's a chord sequence that occurs all over the place. Many songs have used that, uh, but it does seem to uh, defy a lot of what is often um, accepted as standard key theory because, you know, a G major and a B major aren't in the same key and a C major and a C minor aren't in the same key. Uh, so how come those chords seem to work so well together? Um, you know, songs that have used this would be something like Georgia On My Mind, which goes G major to B seventh, which is sort of a, a B major type chord to a C major to a C minor sixth. I'll play it right that time. Um, and then back to the G again. Uh, Creep by Radiohead uses a pretty standard version of that. G, B, C, C minor. Uh, the Air That I Breathe by The Hollies is another one. And uh, what's another one? I think it's Get Free by Lana Del Rey also uses that chord sequence or something very similar. So what is it and how does it work and why do um, those chords work together? Well, let's look at it chord change by chord change. First of all, the G major to the B major or B seventh. There are many v ways of viewing that uh, particular chord change. And uh, I tend to look at it as something called a secondary dominant chord, uh, the B or B7. That's, that is the, it's what I would call a secondary dominant chord. And to understand these, you have to know a little bit about the cycle of fourths. There it is. And if you go in kind of a clockwise direction there, it's called the cycle of fourths. Go the other way, it's called the cycle of fifths. Um, basically, this is a little trick that I discovered uh, years ago playing in cabaret bands where you do uh, usually two sets, roughly an hour each. And the first set is where you are entertaining the crowd. Uh, you're playing stuff that appeals to them. They want to sit and listen to you, basically. But then the second half, they've had a few more drinks down their neck and they want to get up and dance. So you know, you've got to keep the dance floor full. Don't give them an excuse to go and sit down. So basically what you do there is you play lots and lots of medleys. And then you are faced with the uh, the prospect of uh, making the end of one song go seamlessly into the beginning of another. So let's say you've got a song in the key of C major, which finishes on a C chord. <laughs> Uh, and then your next song begins on F sharp minor. How do you make those two chords agree with each other? Because we can hear at the moment that that chord is not a natural neighbour to that chord. Well, what you do is you use a secondary dominant chord. You look at the uh, chord that you want to end up on, in this case the F sharp minor, and you go... Um, basically a fourth below it so you know what's a fourth below um or a fifth above the f sharp minor well it's c sharp so you play either a c sharp major or even better still a c sharp seventh and that takes you nicely to the f sharp minor so you can hear what did sound like this c major to f sharp minor now sounds much more kind of uh, smooth and fluent. There you go. And when you reach that F sharp minor, it doesn't sound as disconcerting. So the B7 in, um, or the B major or B7 in this context, the G to the B7, let's call it, would naturally want to go to an E minor. You can hear that works really well. But here's where the uh, composer or songwriter can play a little trick on the listener. Uh, set up that expected chord, in this case E minor, and then go somewhere else, okay? Which is what happens here. We have G going to a B7, and then instead of going to the uh, E minor, we go to a C major. 
so it's like a little plot twist it's one of those oh i didn't see that coming moments that you might have in a you know in a movie or a, a tv show or something kind of thing they used to do at the end of every episode of lost basically uh, so that's, uh, I often call that a false flag um, secondary dominant chord. That, I don't know if that's an accepted term, that's just my little uh, terminology for it. But basically that's how I think of the B7 in that, um, or B major in that context. So once we've gone to the C major chord, what comes next? Well, we have a C minor. Okay. So why are we allowed to play C minor in a song that's uh, in the key of G major? Well, this all comes down to, I'm afraid, the topic of modes. Uh, we are using something here called uh, modal interchange, or it's sometimes referred, uh, referred to as uh, parallel modes, or you often hear it called things like pitch axis or borrowed chords. It all basically means the same thing. Um, and if we look at uh, basically the chords in the key of G major, if we focus on the G major chord, we have the G Ionian mode, which would have G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, an F sharp diminished or half diminished chord, and then back to G major again. Now, if we look at the uh, G Aeolian mode, that would be the chord of G minor, an A half diminished, a B flat major, C minor, D minor, E flat major, F major, and back to your G minor again. So there are two modes um, of G, the, a G major mode, the G Ionian mode, and a a G minor mode, the G Aeolian mode. And because they are parallel modes uh, from the same root, G, we can kind of um, just flip between them if we like. And you can see that the G Aeolian mode has a C minor chord in it. And the G Ionian mode has a C major chord in it. So all that, um, you know, whoever first came up with this chord sequence uh, did was think, well, okay, let's go from the Ionian mode to the Aeolian mode and then resolve back into the G major again. So that's basically how that chord sequence works um, within, you know, kind of one, two, three, four chord changes. Uh, you've got uh, secondary dominant chords, a little false flag, uh, a version of it, you know, the plot twist kind of thing going on there, and you've got a little bit of modal interchange going on. So I hope that um, clears up any confusion about this uh, much used chord sequence. And now you understand a little bit about how it's working, maybe that'll inspire you to kind of use those techniques to go and write something of your own based upon that. Or maybe it'll be uh, of use to you when you're trying to figure out another chord sequence that you'll kind of remember these um, techniques that we've seen at work here. And uh, that will help you figure out what's going on in some other chord sequence that you may be trying to understand and make sense of or even figure out. So there you go. I hope you found this informative, useful, and maybe even a little bit inspiring. If you have done, please hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and give me a like while you're at it. And since we've talked a little bit here about modes, I will just uh, remind you that I have a, a course on that very sub subject um, available for download at the moment. It's uh, available from there. It's called Making the Modes Easy. Uh, you can see the URL on the screen. The link is in the description box below. And it's more of a lead guitar focused uh, lesson on modes, uh, showing you all of the scale positions you need. Um, you get jam tracks, you get example solos, you get uh, tabs, everything you need to uh, get yourself playing um, like a pro, basically, modally lead, playing lead guitar. Uh, as I say, you can get it from my website. It's only 40 quid. Treat yourself, why don't you? And uh, if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, then why not give me a shout via the details at the end of this video. If you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson or wherever else you are in the world, you can have a lesson via Skype. 
and whichever way you do it, your first lesson is free, so you've got nothing at all to lose. And with that, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks.